Hey guys, Lemmy here, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be discussing art critiques. How does one give a good critique, and what are the best practices for communicating these ideas without offending the artist that's receiving the critique? Also, what are just some things we should be mindful of when giving one? I was asked about this topic a while back from an old friend of mine, and at first I figured there wasn't too much to cover. And then I realized it's actually a pretty important topic to discuss, especially if you're critiquing your own friend's artwork and you want to remain that person's friend after the critique. So first off, for the younger viewers who may not know, a critique is an analysis or an evaluation of something. It doesn't necessarily have to pertain to art, but for the sake of my channel, we'll talk about it as being related to art stuff. Really, a critique could be for anything though, and this advice will help with whatever you're critiquing, whether it be singing, dancing, writing, and so on. So, the most important thing to think of is that, obviously, not everyone is going to be super psyched or happy to be evaluated or examined closely. Which makes total sense, you know, a lot of people simply don't want to deal with someone else's thoughts or opinions, especially regarding something so personal to them. Other people are more open to the idea of receiving critique because they feel that listening to others' opinions may improve the quality of their own artwork. So I really can't stress enough how important it is to judge the situation at hand before going in with your critique. Think about if the artist wants one or doesn't. If you go into a critique with someone who hasn't asked for one, is not open to one, you are at high risk of upsetting that person, especially if it is poorly presented or overly negative. And I've actually seen this ruin quite a few friendships over the years, especially if the critiques are being done between artists of similar skill levels and the artist being critiqued has not asked for the other artist to give that critique. This often can come across as your friend thinking that they're better than you or that they know more than you. And more often than not, the friend will think in return, eh, they're not that great and, you know, I'm just as good if not better, go critique yourself. So please, before going into critiquing anyone or anything, read your audience. Is the critique welcome? That is totally something you should think about. Alright, so remember that definition from earlier about a critique being an evaluation? So often I see people asking for critiques so people can point out what is wrong with their artwork. Or I see people afraid of critiques because someone is going to say bad things about their artwork. However, it's very important to realize that there is nothing inherently negative about the word critique. It is simply an evaluation, and this is where my advice comes in as a person who gives critiques to others. Not everything said about the work must be negative. It can and should also include what is positive about the piece. So this is how I generally work my critiques. I call it the compliment sandwich technique. It's pretty straightforward, but I'll explain it a little further about why I feel this technique is the best one that I know. First off, I like to open with a general statement about the artwork. You know, a feeling you get from it, an idea, something you like. Something that pertains to the work that is positive in nature, but not too heavy. Show what you generally appreciate about it, what you see in it. And that's the top of the bun sprinkled with a little sesame seeds or something like that. Then you have the meat of the sandwich, which is what is thought to generally be the critique or something that may be negative in nature. And I don't like thinking of it in that manner though. I think of it as finding some things that are fixable in the work or suggestions on how to take a different approach in the future. If someone is new to art, don't pick out everything for them to fix. You know, the world wasn't built in a day. Instead, find a few things that if they were changed, it would improve the overall picture. 
It could be as simple as a body part, part or like if the eye is placed a bit off or something. Just some overall food for thought. Sometimes it's as simple as saying if you put some white highlights on the blue water, it would really make it pop, you know. That's something that the artist could do post-finishing and still enhance the picture. Another thing you could do is just simply suggest that the artist tries a different approach altogether for some future work. Like, maybe try some loose sketches. I see you're being very precise, and if you do some fast sketches, it may help you with your posing and kind of like loosen up your sketching process so that everything's not so stiff. Sometimes being so precise can be really super frustrating also if you can't get your picture to look the way you like and it might help take away some of the stress if you do looser sketches and not care so much, that sort of thing. Sometimes suggesting how you can go about doing future pictures to just improve the process or, or how the artwork feels. So basically, you just want to pick out a few things that, if changed, will overall enhance the picture or future artwork by that person. You don't want to be very nitpicky and just pick out everything like, that arm is a little bit bigger than that arm, and then that cap, and then that thigh needs to be bigger than that, and that hair chunk doesn't look realistic compared to that hair chunk, and picking out every little thing like that is like the worst thing you could possibly do. Because unless that person's gonna redraw the same exact picture over again, like, it's not really helpful for future art. So if you pick out something that's glaring, that you know if you point that thing out and they'll be mindful of that in the future, that the future pictures will um, be better for it. That's kind of what you want to do. Then you want to end with another compliment, and this is essentially the bottom part of the bun. You know, it's time to pick out what you really like about the piece. Some things that were really well done that you can build upon. You know, kind of like back to the idea of the bottom of the bun. It's the foundation of your sandwich, you know? And then you can build upon it. Okay, that was kind of kind of lame. But I can't stress enough how important this step is. It's important to be told what is off in a picture, right? So you can see it. But what is equally important is what is done right. After all, wouldn't you want to know what practices to repeat and what things worked well in a picture? So think, what parts of the picture did the artist excel at doing? Did they blend the colors in the hair in a pretty or convincing way? Did they draw some really awesome hands? Did they attempt, attempt to draw something out of their comfort zone? It's important to read your audience. Who are you critiquing? How old are they? What have they done before this piece? Have they made any specific strides or attempts at changing things in a positive way? These are all ideas that will help you give a personalized critique that will help the artist that you are critiquing. It's so very important to leave off on a good note with someone. You know, it will make the person being critiqued more encouraged to continue working on their artwork and also fuel their passion to do something about it afterward. You never want to leave off on something negative because that really will put a damper on someone's creativity. You know, it kind of makes you sulky. And if you look at it as a sandwich, who wants to eat a sandwich that doesn't have the two pieces of the bun? I mean, it's kind of gross and it would make me sad. I think it would make you sad. All in all, if your heart is in the right place, I think it really shines through in a critique. It's super easy to come across looking like a jerk but with a little effort in how you present your ideas, it really does help. I mean, and please, just don't be condescending to who you're talking to. They're another human being. You know, you're not talking down to someone else or trying to make yourself sound better. It's really important to hear yourself and the tone that you're taking with the other person, especially when you're speaking to them you don't want to come across as disrespectful either. That being said, let's say you want to give a critique to an online artist and you don't really know them very well. 
Sometimes intention gets lost through the translation of text. So if the artist responds with like an edgy manner or is kind of like rude, a well thought out calm and kind response can often head off that confrontation. Critiquing people can kind of be like bullfighting, but you don't want to antagonize the bull with the red blanket thing. You want to tame it, calm it down, and be friends with it. You know, bull friends or something. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Oh, and as for the practice of receiving critiques, try to have an open mind. Some people are genuinely trying to help you. And if you're really not open for critiques, a nice response saying so should be enough. You know, I, I try to look at every seemingly negative comment in a positive light. Some comments seem to be really offensive, but in reality, they may not have been intended to be offensive. So by going to every response to a critique, assuming it was well meant, I find is the best practice. All right, I, I think I talked about this way longer than I had planned on. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I covered my bases, you know, what critique is, the compliment sandwich, the importance of the buns, <laughs> how to essentially give and receive a critique, and how to put out a flame before it becomes a forest fire. So here are my questions from this video. I, I put in some thought to these. Have any of you guys out there ever really thought about the manner in which you critique other people? I guess like critiquing your critiquing. <laughs> and how often do you receive critiques that really have hit home and helped you improve yourself as an artist? Do you often feel that people understand you when they look at your piece and evaluate it? And how often do you think critiques miss their mark completely? Have you ever thought a critique you received was incorrect and then later on you realized that it was actually true? Oh, and okay, this, if any question, this is the most important question to me. Do you think that you need, you need to be critiqued by someone else in order to improve? If any question is to be answered, it's that one. Because I think I have some, I don't know. I'm not sure if, if my, my thought about that is mainstream or not. So <laughs> if any question is answered, please answer the last one. I'm very curious what you guys think. As always, I hope that you guys found this video to be inspiring or encouraging. And I certainly hope that this video helps somebody out there in the audience. And I'll talk to you guys very soon in another art video, so you guys take care of yourselves.